Welcome back. You're watching The Globe. Now, the French schooner Tara will be arriving in Cape Town on Friday. And the research vessel left its home port in uh, Lorient in France on December, the, uh, December 2020. And this for a two-year mission to study oceanic microbiomes. Now, since its departure, it's traveled to the coasts of Chile, Brazil and Argentina, as well as uh, the Weddell Sea in Antarctica. Marine microorganisms are the first link in an immense food web that feeds a large part of humanity. They regulate the Earth's temperature and play a key role in the nutrition of ecosystems. The third part of the Tara scientific mission will focus on the study of the West African coast. The scientists on board will study the Benguela current as well as the impact of three major African rivers, namely the Orange River, the Congo River and the Senegal River on the Atlantic Ocean. During the last stage, the Shuna will stop in seven countries, namely South Africa, Namibia, Angola, Democratic Republic of Congo, Republic of Congo, Gambia and Senegal. Now, Professor Tulani Makalanyane of the University of Pretoria will be looking at plastic pollution in the main African rivers and study their impact uh, on the South Atlantic Ocean. He's also a chief scientist aboard the uh, 14th leg of the uh, Tara Schooner Research Expedition. Uh, Prof, thanks very much indeed for joining us and welcome to the program. I, I guess it must be an honor for us, South Africa, that you are on this leg of this expedition. Yeah, thanks a lot for the opportunity uh, to speak about our work, Peter. Yeah, it is indeed a, a great honor. I'm not sure for South Africans, but it is an honor for me to join this global <laughs> expedition. All right, very important work. Tell us a little bit about the schooner, what it's been doing, and how you then get involved in this leg. Yeah. So the tower is an international uh, research vessel that's been, uh, you know, to all the different oceans. Um, as you in, in your introduction stated, uh, this current leg has been to about four major stopovers, and the next leg will be along the west coast of Africa. So our work um, at the University of Pretoria is to understand what are called microbiomes. So a microbiome um, is really just a fancy scientific term to describe small microorganisms that are invisible to the, to the naked eye. So we study bacteria, archaea, and viruses that are in the world's oceans. All right, so where do plastics fall into this equation? Yeah, so uh, it's actually much bigger than plastics. Mm. So we understand and we know that uh, the oceans are currently subject to uh, lots of major different pollutants. So the microorganisms that are in uh, the oceans are potentially uh, you know, uh, impacted by these plastics and other contaminants that we uh, throw into our oceans. Our work aims to first provide an understanding of the type or the diversity of microorganisms that are in the world's oceans, because we go into locations that have essentially never been studied before. So in addition to doing that, we will be studying the, eff the effects of how, uh, you know, uh, physical uh, conditions, such as, for instance, the pollution of plastics, impact on the abilities of these microorganisms and how they, uh, you know, uh, may potentially not be able to provide important ecosystem services that they provide. All right. I mean, research is about finding out. What do we know already and what do you suspect you might find through this work? Yeah, so as I mentioned earlier, the tower has been all around the world. Uh, a research uh, paper that's recently been published by uh, some of my colleagues, you know, discovered that there's about 5,000 new viruses that have not been discovered previously. And this was uh, in work done on in the Arctic Circle. So we are also expecting uh, concomitantly high levels of uh, diversity uh, in these African coasts. Um, so we, our, our work will essentially be to find out what type of microorganisms are out there and what are they actually doing in these oceans. 
All right, and once we know, what do we do with all of this information? Well, first of all, uh, you know, what we all know, um, as your interview earlier with Mr. Mtembu, uh, 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 you know, highlighted to us, that the world is subject to lots of climatic uh, changes. Part of these climatic changes, we can better predict, uh, you know, so if we study the type of microorganisms that are in the oceans now, we can better predict how changing environmental conditions might lead to a destabilization of ecosystem processes. At the moment, we don't know what's there. So it's really hard to integrate these data into earth system models and other models that give us a, a good way to forecast what might happen in the future. What's peculiar to our shores uh, uh, when you start comparing with the rest of the world? Yeah, so, um, you know, with microorganisms and microbiomes in particular, they differ um, at different latitudinal scales. So things like temperature, things like the nutrient conditions in, uh, you know, the, the coastal environments, all of those factors actually shape a different composition of microorganisms. So we suspect, I mean, given the type of conditions that might be, for instance, in the Congo Basin, um, with the high temperatures that are out there and nutrient conditions which are very different, we might actually discover a high diversity of microorganisms that are far different from what's been reported previously. All right. I mean, this is all very fascinating. And, and I just wonder, uh, you say it will help us um, uh, tell some stories. Um, I always hear about ecosystems and how everything is intertwined. Just how connected are we on land uh, and on the ground with this, this mm -hmm. massive uh, uh, life underwater? We are deeply connected, right? Because we are essentially one planet. Uh, in fact, you know, we, we, we barely stop to think about how uh, the earth below us, whether it's the microorganisms that are in the air, um, that are in the soils that we touch, that are inside our guts, how those microorganisms may actually affect our health status. You know, previous studies, not studies done in the oceans, have shown that the microorganisms that are inside your body actually help your body break down uh, compounds that your body would not be able to process without these microorganisms. Of course, there is a connection between the organisms that are outside in the environment and the ones that are essentially inside us. Without microorganisms, for instance, you know, plants would not be able to uh, carry out photosynthesis and would essentially have no food. So there is a deep connection between the environment and also with us. And I'm just thinking, you know, I mean, the, the potential of what could be is, is enormous. I mean, are we looking at maybe even things like new medicines, the more we understand what's underwater? Yeah, uh, so that's exactly one of the things we are interested in as part of this voyage. Um, we will be, uh, you know, uh, we, we know that microorganisms are able to produce some compounds some of those compounds may be even useful for industrial applications. As part of this major project, we are also working with biotechnological companies to see how we can harness some of the you know, traits of these organisms to produce different types of medicines, for instance. So that's one application uh, from this work. We've seen on land um, how man and his habitat and how he behaves has affected a lot of the e ecology on the surface. Are we doing the same uh, to what's happening underwater? And are we seeing microorganisms disappearing as a result of human activity? Yeah. First of all, I must, be, I must say that I'm glad we're talking about microorganisms just before 10 o'clock in the evening. Yeah. But you are exactly correct. We are... Um, you know, uh, uh, impacting the planet to such a grand scale that some of the things that we do, we have no consideration as to how it ultimately affects the functioning of the oceans. So you talked earlier about, you know, plastic contamination that we gradually throw into the oceans. That's affecting marine organisms. 
Um, uh, the ones that we can see, you know, the so-called charismatic macrofauna, but it's also impacting the organisms that we cannot see and their abilities to carry out important uh, you know, uh, ecosystem services such as sequestering carbon is potentially impacted by some of the things that we do as humans. Professor Magalanyane, thank you so, so much for joining us. Fascinating conversation. And uh, I hope we can catch up with you uh, once the work is done uh, to tell us a little bit more about what you found. Thanks, Peter, for the opportunity. In fact, you know, uh, while I'm on board the yeah. tower, it would be excellent to talk to you from, let's say, the Congo Basin and give you an update on some of the work that we're doing. Okay, that is a definitely a must. We're going to make sure that happens. Safe travels. Thank you so much. Cheers. All right. Okay, fascinating subject, isn't it, Professor Tulani uh, Makalani, who's uh, with the University of Pretoria, uh, taking a look at uh, plastic pollution, amongst other issues, uh, on the African rivers, uh, studying microorganisms uh, in our oceans and uh, how they're being impacted and perhaps uh, some of the secrets that they might hold uh, for us as humanity.